All right, I'm locking off. I have the BFK to make sure I don't come off the end. Tether in. If one of these ropes is which. And again, I've got that attached to me to make sure I don't drop it. You've got them both attached to you? No, one's attached to the anchor. Okay. Well, I guess technically, yes, it's attached to me right here. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm gonna myself here. That's the other thing too, you gotta really pay attention that you're not tangling things up in these big wall scenarios. Take that there, get that locked off. All right, so like I said, we, we need the full length of the <coughs> ropes for the scenario. Pull this through the anchor. And for now, I'm just gonna retie my figure eight on the end. <coughs> so I don't need, I'm gonna need all of this rope. I'm just gonna clip that in as a safety here. You're putting it on the inside of the tether. What was that? You're putting it on the I was inside. Just it on some attachment point. I just okay. happen to have this carabiner here with all the attachment holes. So I'm yes. Using it for the moment, take just enough out that I need to tie a block. All right. So that's set up. It's blocked. It's safetyed. And from here, I can just take this and deploy the actual bag because it will deploy much more cleanly out of a bag than it will if you try to coil and throw it. And because I, like I said, I need the full length of this for the repel scenario. So I can just set that up and deploy it now. Rope. So that's all set. I still have this to manage here. And I'm still hanging on this. I'm attached to this at the moment. So when I mentioned earlier about only tying this for the first person, the reason for that is you're gonna take it once you get here and you're gonna attach the end of this. Maybe not quite that far down. You wanna judge the distances a little better. Maybe tie it like right here. So you're gonna leave the repeller enough rope that they can get to the anchor and get tethered in, but you're gonna tie it to the anchor so there's no way they can repel off the end. That makes sense? So I'm just figure eighting this. And attaching that directly into the anchor. So now the second person down, when they come down, if they miss the station, they're not going to go past this point. Yeah, right. All right. So that's the first rope that you just attached. This is the first attached. one. This is the one I'm still on right now. Okay. All right. So I'm going to unlock this. That's the first person. Repel into my tether, just like we did before. Double check that that's secure. You can add another one if you wanted your second tether for some redundancy. pull this completely out. So if I were going to stay and man this station and pass people through, which I've had to do a number of times, you would just stay tethered in here. They would come down and kind of step off to the side out of the way and kind of help them in the transition from, from one rope to the next. This is my retrieval side here. See how that would work? Yes. So they would come down here. You can help them get tethered in if they're really panicky. One rope to the other. So I would switch to this rope and go. Next person would come down. And typically, even with it clipped in, I'll keep someone here to belay. Once that person gets tethered in, you make sure they're secure, just so you have someone to double check you. Okay. You don't want to just abandon the station and leave them to their own devices. It's always good to have a second set of eyes. Of course. To check the second person coming down and also for them to check you as you switch to the other rope as well. That just gives you a little more supervision rather than just abandoning your friends to their own devices, hoping they're in the right mind state to accomplish these technical tasks like this. 
<clears throat> so let's say your friends come down mm -hmm. and they have tethered in and they're just hanging there off the first rope. Yeah. Then you get on the next rope and head down and yeah, get out get of their the way. Get on the next rope and head down, get out of their way. Then they would move into your position and okay. watch the next person come down. Okay. following so far yep so I'm still tethered in I'm tied to my second rope now locked off um, if I were the last person to come down and I need to set this up to retrieve the whole system I'm gonna take this apart first of all because this is my rappel side that needs to pull back through the upper anchor right so this needs to be clean and free so it can pull through make sure that looks good I'm going to take the pole side and attach it to the other side of this, my second rope. I'm going to remove this safety here so I can get to the end of the rope to work with it. That's the safety on the first rope. That's on the second rope. That's on this rope. Okay. So I'm already attached to it. I've made sure it's good to go. I need to tie my second rope onto this. Okay. <laughs> There's kind of a lot of rope left in this bag. Ideally, I would have pulled this all out to get to the end of it. That's just an interest. Of... Or you have a double-ended rope bag. Or you have a double-ended rope bag. That would have been ideal for this situation as well. Yeah. I guess there's not that much left in there. Rope. these two ropes, tie them together. And what knot are you using for that? I'm using the European death knot. Okay. So just an overhand. It's just overhand, yeah. Quick and easy. Because you're the last person. Last person at this point. <clears throat> so, and you're double tying it. Is that the EDK is double tied? Yeah, it's typically double tied like that. Okay. All right, so at this point, I can go ahead and just let that fall. I'm going to take this one from this position and pull the first one. So this just falls into place as it comes down where it needs to be to retrieve my second rope. So that could potentially be, if you're on a big wall, that could be falling onto you. Yes, absolutely. You want to watch as it comes down. Yeah. Rope. So that just fell. It's now hanging off the cliff, but it's also tied to this and ready to retrieve this once I come off of it. Follow that? Yeah. Yeah. So at this point, again, double check everything. Remove any extra gear you've got hanging out up here. Like this chain of carabiners on the rope back. <laughs> <laughs> Daisy chain of carabiners. <laughs> okay, from there I can take my tethers off. Good. So you have to be remain super diligently conscious because you don't want to. You don't want to miss any steps. In this. Yeah. You always want to make sure you're attached to something else before removing anything. Right. Okay. So the first thing you need is an anchor on this side. And typically, especially in aquatic canyons where they're not linking bolts, you'll see, I'll demonstrate this. This you'll see one hanger upright and one turned sideways, like pointing in the direction the traverse line is going to go. We don't actually have that here, but that's what you would find. If you find a sideways bolt pointing towards the drop, it's probably for a traverse line and it's not here. So there are two ways to do this. If it's not very technical and you feel like you can do it by yourself without needing your hands to hold on to things, you can set this up by passing it through the anchor, tying a figure eight on a bite to create a loop. And this is gonna clip into the head of your repel device, like so. 
And you're basically gonna self lower yourself out to the anchors. This other side, I'm gonna clip the bag up to my side here. I'm gonna hook in like I'm repelling. All right, so now at this point, once that takes tension, so now I can kind of hold myself here like so and just kind of feed slack out as I get out. If I do slip off the edge and I hold on to this, I'm still attached to something. It's going to be an ugly swing. You're going to get banged up, but you shouldn't hit the ground. All right. So I'm just going to continue to lower myself out like this. Keep an eye on this for abrasion and things. But it shouldn't be too tight as you go. And you want to have as little friction as possible here because you're gaining a whole nother friction point at the anchor. It'll be incredibly hard to move if I add the leg in friction, right? All right. You wanna come over here and see what you do next? Yeah. First thing you're gonna do is tether into the anchor itself. Make sure you're not gonna go anywhere. Alright, so now that I'm safe there, I can feed some slack out here. So this whole time you're kind of balancing and hanging yeah, so I could precariously. Be, I'm attached now. Yeah. And that's a dynamic tether that you were talking yes. about. Okay. I'm gonna take this side, put the carabiner on it, put that into the anchor. So you clip it into the webbing, not the carabiner, or quickly. It could be bolts as well. It just depends on what your anchor is. You okay. Just something anchored here. Um, like I said, this is just a quick kind of mm -hmm. makeshift anchor. I'm going to take the other side, take it out of my device, snug it up a bit, bring it up here. You can do another figure eight, or you can just do a pull pitch. Do it one-handed. <laughs> I want to see it if it's two handed glow good. Alright, so now both sides are attached there. You can take the rope bag and get it out of the way as well. Is that anymore? All right, and now so you've got a traverse. Is, now we have a traverse line. Mm -hmm. um, then you would set up your rappel off here as well. Typically you want to have two lengths for this, for the traverse line. Mm -hmm. You're going to use your short one to go around both of them and the long one to go inside. Hmm. So what that does, the short one, because it's around both, keeps it from sagging any farther than it needs to. If you're only on one, you can see that oh, yeah. much farther out. The reason you have a second one inside is if the anchor point failed, you're still inside of the closed loop. So if I'm just around both ropes and that anchor fails, you would slide right off the end of the rope. Okay. Right. You see that? Yes, because it's enclosed. See it if I go to the anchor? Yeah. <laughs> but again, you want the short one around both so you don't have to stay. You can just follow that out. Okay. Loop through the anchor like this. Mm -hmm. and the last person. So the last person would just have to de-rig this. Mm -hmm. You're gonna add a second person to this. So Nicole, you're gonna be my anchor here. Okay. I'm gonna pass it through just like we did before. Here. So I'm gonna hook this to myself. And you're basically gonna be a meat anchor on the other side of the anchor here. Okay. And you're gonna lower me out, if that makes sense. Okay. Go ahead and hook that into your rappel device. So I'm just going directly into the carabiner here with a much cleaner figure eight that I tied. Because you are a pro. Okay. And then you're just going to go ahead and kind of plant. Yep. Um, you Wherever. You can come I'm... this way if you wanted to. And you're still kind of using the anchor here. Okay. You can even be on this side lowering through the anchor. Like that. Okay. Okay. So that way the anchor is doing the work. Because if someone takes a fall and you're just a meat anchor, they're going to pull you off. You always have to have this anchor with you. Okay. And However, was... it's going through her device, so she's also... Yes, but she would get sucked into the anchor and wouldn't go past that. Point. Okay, I see. Does that make sense? Yes. So 
the amount of force you're going to generate on a big pendulum would send the meat anchor with yeah, you if you don't have another anchor as well. Okay. So with this, I can use my hands, I can climb my way out. If I slip, then your meat anchor locks you off and you again take the same nasty swing. Four. Four. Oh, sorry, I thought I, I thought I was supposed to lock you off so you didn't swing. So I'm hooking it to the anchor just like before. But the difference here is once that's hooked, I don't have the other end yet. Mm -hmm. It's easy to put a block in it this time. So she would take care of that because you yeah, stay at the other just, side, she right? stay here. Yeah. Just throw a block in here. And lock it off. Like so. Well, then what does the last person do? The do they leave the block? You can use the pole side with them. You can leave the block in. Okay. That way they still have a traverse line. Mm -hmm. um, but they just bring the bag side, and then once you disconnect that side, you can pull it through just like we did before. Right. You're pulling yourself out, and the other, someone else is pulling you out. If you have a longer cordelette,